We've looked previously at using console.writeline to write text to the console window. So if we run this, uh, what we should see is we get the word hello printed on the screen. But what happens if we want to do that multiple times? So imagine we wanted 10 lots of hello for some reason. So we could copy and paste. So uh, Visual Studio has some of the, pro the features of you know, a word processor, for example, in the sense that you can copy, paste, um, find, replace. So I could just copy myself uh, 10 hellos. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Obviously, the downside of that is that I have to count them and to have to make sure I've got the right number. And I'm only doing 10 here, but if I wanted to do 1,000, obviously, that would be a bit of a faff. Um, so let's have a look. Obviously, that does the trick. So I'm getting 10 lots of hello there. Um, number of downsides to this. Obviously, my program's quite big. I've got the diff difficulty of counting them. If I want to change what it says, obviously, I've got 10 occurrences. So if I wanted to change that to high, for example, if I was converting it to a different language, and I wanted to say bonjour instead, for example, um, that would that would be less than ideal. So obviously, as you'd expect, there's uh, a better way to do it. So we can repeat a single character. Um, if you remember the uh, str dup uh, string duplicate function, a single character can be repeated, but uh, not a whole word. So how would we go about that? Well, there's two main ways to repeat things in Visual Basic. So if you want to repeat things a fixed number of times, so 10 times in this case, for example, um, then you probably use uh, something called a for loop. And if you want to repeat until something happens, or while a particular condition is true, you want a while loop, and there's a separate video on that. So by a fixed number of times, it doesn't necessarily have to be fixed when you write the program, it just needs to be fixed um, by the time you start the repeated section. So for example, you could calculate the number of times to repeat based on um, you know, the number of letters in a word, for example, or some previous input on behalf of the user. So uh, let's have a look at how we uh, create a, a, a repetition with a for loop. So uh, a for loop basically has the idea of counting. So you can say, if you want to do something 10 times, you say, well, count from 1 to 10, and each time you go up one, you kind of do that thing. So to do that, we need a thing called a loop counter. So repetition um, is often called looping by programmers. So we need a variable to store the number as we're counting. So I'm just going to call it i for integer, and it will be an integer because we're counting up in whole numbers. So I've got myself an integer, and this is how 4 works. Uh, we could have, for example, 4i equals 1 to 10. And what that means is count from 1 to 10, basically. Um, the end of the repeated section is indicated by next, and any, anything between the 4 and the next is repeated um, for each value of i. So because i is going to count from 1 to 10, if I do this, so if I say console dot uh, line hello, if I run that program now, I get 10 lots of hello. Um, and the benefit of that is not only is it shorter, but if I decide I want to uh, convert that to French, for example, I've only got one thing that I need to edit, and I can run it again, and I get 10 lots of bonjour instead. So how's that working? So how it's working is um, the value of i becomes each value in the range from 1 to 10. So i will be 1, and it will it will do that. And then i will be 2, and it will do that. And i will be 3, and 4, and 5, and 6, and 7, and 8, and 9, and 10. So whatever is in this middle section is repeated 10 times. Notice that it's good practice to indent the repeated section to make your program um, more readable. And then we know when we go move back um, to the left, then that's the end of the repeated section. So if I put something down here, for example, uh, so uh, if I run this now, uh, that bottom line, the end, will only be done once. So at the end, because it's outside the for next um, construct and it's not indented. Okay, so if we want to see, we can use that variable i. So if instead of creating uh, writing bonjour, I just write i, we'll be able to see what it's doing. So I'm just printing the value of i as I'm going around. So i starts off as 1, and then it goes around again, and when it's become 2, and it goes around again when it's become 3, up until uh, i is 10, and then it stops. 
So that's from 1 to 10. So it's just literally counting up. We can count up um, any range of numbers. So we can start negative if we want to. So if we we're plotting a graph, for example, and we wanted a range of x values from minus 5 to plus 5, uh, we can do that as well. It'll cope with that. Um, and also, it can cope with going up in different size steps. So if I go from uh, 0 to 100, for example, if I want to change the step size, there's an additional bit at the end, which I can say I can say step 10. So that means count from 0 to 100 in steps of 10. And if I run that, we can see it goes 0, 10, 20, etc., up to 100. And if we want to count down, uh, we can do a similar thing. So we can say count from 100 uh, down to 0. Uh, and we're going steps of minus 10. So we use negative numbers for counting down. And uh, we can do that as well. So that's counting from 100 down. We can count down in ones as well if you we wanted to. So if you wanted to go from uh, 5 down to minus 5, so negative ones are OK as well. And steps of minus 1, that will also work. So this is always going to work on an integer. So you're always going to count a whole number of times. Or certainly within the um, the GCSE kind of um, level. So we can do that. Um, we can and we can print the i, but we can also do things with that. So we could, you know, square i. We don't have to just use i. We can do anything we like with that. It just behaves as a standard variable. So now if I'm doing i squared. We can see we get the we get the square of the value rather than the actual value. So if I wanted to create um, something like a times table program, I could do that quite easily using this. So I'm going to need another another variable. So because it's such a short program, I'm okay to call them i and t. And in fact, loop counters quite often uh, just use a single letter i n x, for example. T is going to represent the uh, the table that I want to do. So I'm going to say console.write and then I'm just going to ask a question, which table would you like? And then I'm going to store that in T. So console.read. So we've looked at these in previous videos if you haven't watched that. And then what I'm going to do is so when I was at school, I'm sure we started at 2, but these days they seem to start at 0 when they're doing their times tables. So I'm going to go from 0 to 12 and go up in 1s. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to output the times table. So I'm going to say console dot um, right line. So I'm going to print 1, what I want to see on one line of my times table, and then the loop is going to repeat that for me. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to have the I'm going to have i first, and in fact I've missed that bit out, haven't I? So i equals so i is going to count up from zero to twelve. So I'm going to say zero times, one times, two times, etc. So I want that first. So yeah, I could do something like this. I could say i, and then ampersand for joining text together, and then times, oops, times, and then an ampersand and t and then an ampersand and an equals and then an ampersand and well what's that going to equal it's going to equal the two things multiplied together so i could say i uh, t times i or i times t doesn't really matter so that would work this is a good case where um, the other form of printing would work so uh, we would, would be clearer so i could construct this sentence of what uh, i want it to look like so i'm going to say zero um, item 0 times item 1 is equal to uh, item 2. And then what we're going to say is what those are. So the first thing is i, so that's the thing we're counting. The second thing is t, which is the table. And then 2 is the answer, which is going to be i times t. And that's shorter. But that's also, I think that's a bit clearer to read because that's what you're going to be seeing just with the numbers inserted in there. And there's, and there's a bit more on that in the uh, input and output video. OK, so um, hopefully that should uh, print my times tables now. So let's have a look at that. So I'm going to run that. It's going to say which table would I like. I'm going to go for the 2 times table. And it's going to say 0 times 2 is 2, 1 times 2 is 
two, uh, sorry, not times two, zero. Uh, one, two is two, two, four, six, eight, etc. up to 12 times two, which is 24. And if I run that program again, and say I'd like the five times table this time, um, it's going to display that as well. So that's much more useful uh, than being able to uh, well, then having to kind of do each calculation individually, I can repeatedly do that calculation. And uh, we can also do it for things like, um, uh, you know, if we wanted to construct sentences. So if we were doing 10 green bottles, for example, um, let's have B for bottle. Obviously, that's going to be an integer. And then we're going to count down. So this is a task. If you have a look below, and uh, this is a task on my um, programming page. So, um, so we don't need T anymore. So I'm going to count down B uh, from um, 10. So it's a counting song. So it counts down from 10. And I'm going to count down to, I'm going to count down to 1. And I'll show you why. So we're going to have, um, we just want the number, don't we? So, so that's going to be B. So we'll have the number and then we'll have green bottles hanging on the wall. So what that's going to say is that's going to say 10 to begin with. and then, uh, But that's repeated, isn't it, that line? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to repeat that. And then the... So we can have as many repeated lines as we want to. So in the previous example, we only had one thing that was repeated. But as long as they're all before the next, they'll all get repeated. So uh, right line... And if one green bottle should accidentally fall, there'll be. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to add an extra space to separate my verses out. I'm going to add that VBCR LF um, constant. So that's also in the input and output video if you've missed that. Um, and so hopefully, if I print, if I run this now. This should look something like the song. Oh, that's because it so it didn't do anything. So that's that's a good example. So let's have a look at that. That's one thing I forgot to mention. That if the first number is higher than the second number, you have to have a step size. So if you're counting down, you have to have the step, and obviously it has to be negative. So otherwise it does nothing. You don't get an error, it just doesn't do anything. So now I have to uh, do that. So now my program, it says 10 green bottles hanging on the wall, 10 green bottles hanging on the wall. If one green bottle should accidentally fall, there'll be. And it counts down. And the reason I've counted down from 1, uh, down, sorry, down from 10 to 1, is that the last line is different, isn't it? So what I want I need to do outside the repeated section is just print. So console.writeline, no green bottles. Because the last line is the last line is different. And that should then complete the song. So starting off at 10, counting all the way down to one green bottle hanging on the wall. Now if you wanted to, you could do some additional work to that to get it to say one green bottle. So have a look at the decision video. Um, if you want to look at how to commit the program complete um, to make decisions and change the output depending on um, certain variables um, but that for now that's the song done and that's a look at repetition for using uh, using four so it just counts up um, in the range or counts down if you have a negative step size and it's used when we want to repeat a fixed number of times but um, the number doesn't have to be fixed because these can be variables so it doesn't have to be it's only fixed by the time you reach the four line so, for example, if we wanted to repeat things, let's just have a look at one final example then. If we wanted to have, um, uh, so, name as string, for example. So, if we wanted to do this, so we could say, uh, ask somebody what their name is. So, name equals console.readline. Read line. Uh, and then we'll ask them what their name is first. So we'll say console dot write what 
what is your name and then what we'll do is we'll just repeat uh, some text the number of times that they uh, for once for each letter in their name for example so we could say we'll say hello so this isn't a kind of fixed number of um, times in the sense that it's always going to do it 10 times but it's fixed by the time we get to the four line so we're going to count from so we're still using B we're going to count from one to um, the number of letters in the name so we'll use len so there's another video about uh, text manipulation and, and things like len but len tells me how many letters are in the name so I'm going to count up from one to ten um, so I'm going to run this now it's going to ask me my name I'm going to say Andrew. Andrew's got six letters in it, so it's going to give me six lots of um, hello. I've still got my uh, no green bottles hanging on the wall there. So if I have a, a shorter name, so if I run that again, so for my name's just uh, Ian, for example, I'll only get three hellos. And if I've got a longer name, such as uh, Elizabeth, then I'll get more hellos. So that's um, four, using um, using four to repeat things a fixed number of times, but only fixed by the time that the for loop actually starts. If you want to repeat things uh, while something's happening or until a particular condition is true, have a look at the next video, which is using the while loop.